why. So what? If, let's quickly uh, together talk about this. If we multiply these two together, we get three to the yeah. four to the nine and five to the fifteen. Because how do we know that's the power? It is three. Well, the first one is three times three times three times three times three. Right, okay, so we, if we write it out, then we have five factors of three, and then, like, as we want to make this process faster and faster, we realize, well, there's two factors of three there, and three factors of three there for a total of five. There's three factors of four here multiplied by six factors of four, so we can just add, add the exponents together, and you get a nine, you get a 15. So if that rule remains true, that's why I said sometimes in math, a lot of times in math, things are the way they are because they have to be that way, otherwise it breaks math. It breaks math. If it's not, if this doesn't come out right, it'll break math, okay? So, that adding thing has got to keep working, is one way to look at it, okay? It's got to keep working, even for fraction exponents. So when we add these fraction exponents, we should get nine to the? First. First, so now we have a number times its exact self gives you nine, so what number times itself gives you nine? Three. Times three. 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 three times three. What do we call three? And, and the square root of nine, okay? So apparently nine to the one half is the same as the square root of nine. I had that. You said I need to explain why. All you have to do is say the words. I just said the words. Okay, then I challenged you to do something like 64 to the one third, or eight to the one third, something to the one third power, okay? What, what'd you guys do? Um, we ended up taking it times, it's like 64 to the third times 64 to the one third. Uh-huh. You did it, at first you did it yeah, twice. Yeah, we did it twice and then. And it was to the? It was to the two thirds. To the two thirds, which is right, if you're at this, which is just as confusing as to the one third. But if you do it one more time, we get all the powers to add up to? 64. The powers. One. To add up to one again, which is, I know what 64 is, and now I know that I have a number times a number times a, itself three yeah, times. That was four. Which it's is four. Four to the third is 64. To the third is 64. Okay. Six to the one third is four. So, to the one half seems to be the square root of a number. Uh, 64 to the one third is then the third root, or the cubed root of 64. Okay? Just like you cube something, you can cube root something. Okay? It's just the, it's just the, the opposite of three over one. <laughs> the opposite of three over one? It's the one over three. So we do the exact opposite. Instead of multiplying 64 times 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 64 Exact Figure out what times Figure itself three times is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's what I hope we get out of this. Could I have just said nine to the one half is the same as square root of nine? Remember that. Sixty-four to the one third is the same as the third root of sixty-four. And you did you get that pattern? Sure. Right, but you won't really get it. And it's mentioned in the book. This is mentioned just really quickly in the book that. Uh, that this fact means that to the one half has to be the same as the square root. But I want to concentrate more on it. Right? And it'll do you favors. Like, here, here's one favor that, that I see um, an understanding of something. Uh, this is a long sentence. So, when I, I saw a, a, a contrast between pattern recognition and understanding, okay, here it is. If we multiply these together, we get four to the ninth. Why? Well, because you add the exponents. Why? Okay. So uh, Anthony over here, answer that question. How? Because you're multiplying two threes together. You're multiplying three threes together. And what does that notation mean? It means how many factors you're multiplying together. Clearly, two plus three factors. And so on. And so on. And I don't know if I mentioned this class. Sometimes I like I I use the adding rule and the multiplying uh, exponents rule. Of course I do, because it's faster. But sometimes I forget. Like I get a little mixed up in my mind, or I'm sleepy, or whatever. You're like, am I supposed to add these or, or multiply these? And really quickly, I just write it out long ways in my head, and I remember, and then obviously it's that. And then we'll make sense again. So would it be easier to learn math if we just started with the long way? Um, sometimes, sometimes not. But we like always start with the short way. 
Um, what would 64 to the 2, uh, yeah, I don't love textbooks. 64 to the 2 thirds. Now, you can do this without a calculator, you can find exactly what this is worth. It's like a puzzle. And all I'll do to help you out is I want you to think about can I rewrite this exponent somehow? Can I rewrite it? Using these exponent rules, just like I did with the previous one. And I'm just going to remind you uh, if I write 5 to the 3rd to the 4th, how do those powers combine? So think about that as you think about this. Can I, now I know what fraction, like I, I know what to the 1 3rd means. Can I use that? Okay. So talk about that with each other. Wait, like the answer? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking. Uh, they were all genius. Your explanations were were all pretty close to each other. They were great. Some variations, but all like sound. They're all very mathematically sound. Um, I heard a lot of. We know what sixty-four to the one-third is, and this must be maybe from this group's contribution to the discussion. Uh, we know that 64 to the third times 64 to the third would obviously be that, 64 to the two thirds. Right? Or we could look at it like this, 64 to the one third times itself, we could use exponent notation to write that. Right? And what do we do when we, when we raise a power to a power? Multiply. Multiply those powers, so we get 64 to the two thirds. Okay, well, going back here, we know that 64 to the one third is four, we figured that out already, and 64 to the one third is also four, so this is four times four. If we come back here, 64 to the 1 third is 4. Square that, you get 16. Really awesome. Okay. So, um, in reality, the majority of, of the math we do isn't about the okay. physical like, numbers like 64 and stuff like that. It's about the variables. Like, this can be anything. So, just plugging numbers in the math. That's what algebra is all about. Yeah. It's, now we, so the algebra of it is to say that um, x to the m over n power. Anything times anything over anything? Yeah, any number raised to any fraction can be rewritten in this general way. Well, first, x to the 1 over n to the m. Right, would you agree, following this pattern over here? Okay. We could also do, we could raise this to the m and then put 1 over n up here. But it's a little easier to do it this way, because then we can look at it as the how can we look at it if it's a 1 over n power? How, how can we look at that as in terms of x? Like what about x are we trying to figure out? The root of it? The root, the nth root of it, right? What number times itself this many times will give you that, okay? So the nth root of x, meaning n is some number. Are you laughing at me? Yeah. Why? Because you said n. N? Oh, <laughs> the nth root uh, means that n is, is some number, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Whatever that number is, we're trying to multiply uh, some number we don't know yet, times itself that many times to get x, and we raise that to the m power. You're like tree root. Tree root? What? what? In Lord of the Rings? <laughs> the nth power. Not nth. You ever, so you ever look at those patterns in, in numbers? I don't know if I'm alone in this, but when I was a kid, I, I, I realized like first to second to third to fourth, and after fourth, everything just gets a th, and it's kind of sad for everything. After four, okay? Because th is so horrible. I don't know, it's just everything's the same. Nothing's unique except for the one, two, and three. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, until you get to the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and then it all starts over again. I just feel bad for everybody but 1, 2, and 3. 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, 2. Because it ends in a 2. Only because it ends in a 2 does it get its own 30 second. Its own little... So you're only complaining about 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and... I'm not complaining about them, I just feel bad for them. 10. And zero, you gain zero in place. Zero, yeah, I guess. Anyway, so that's like like uh, like Gordon said. It's, it's algebra. It, it takes specifics and turns them into general. So it says any number that you raise to a fraction power, you can write it as well the nth root. Right, the nth root. This can always serve as the root. 
And then this could always serve as, once you find the root, raise it to that power. You can talk to one password. Yeah. He talks very slowly. <laughs> because nothing's worth saying if it doesn't make a lot of money to say. Sure. You just finished saying good morning. How long have you been in this class? What? The beginning of the year. See if there's anything that, that we don't know based on all this. Simplified square roots. Okay. So for instance, how would I simplify the square root of 32? Take something from itself. Take out like an 8 and 4. Take out 8 and 4 says 8 times 4. Is 8 times 4? Uh, I would take 16. 16 two. times 2? Yeah, so 8 times 4 is good. 16 times, why did you choose 16 times 2? Because 16 has a square root. Because 16 is, a, is the biggest factor I can figure out that also has a square root. Yeah. 8 times 4 would work too, but then the 8 itself has a factor. Out. And you would do it twice. Yeah. So 4 times the square root of 2. But now we're dealing with third roots. What's a third root mean? Isn't it plus or minus the square root of 2? 4? We've already had this discussion. And no. um, so what does the third root mean? The third root of a number of these. To the one third, but what does that mean? Like what, what the number that I'm looking for, what properties is that? Um, has to be to the you have to be able to raise it to the third to get the number. Yeah, you have to be able to multiply by itself three times. Exactly. Okay. So, well, the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. Um, but the, does like 4 have a third root? No. No, because nothing times itself three times is 4. Well, there is some number, but it's an irrational number. Okay. You have like 20 minutes, or 25 minutes. Am I wrong? Yeah. No. Why is there so much zipping? Zippy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, shame and dishonor will fall on the house. If you think about it, this is, just to prove it to you, this is 104 to the 1 third. This is uh, 4 to the 1 third. Okay. Uh, we could we could really write this as 104 times 4 to the one third. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be 416. Really, we're looking for the third root of 416. And we can try, but uh, we'll pretty quickly find out that there's no perfect third root of 416. Um, so we split it apart into third roots. So that we, we want to pick a number like 16 in this example, but what what should this number have, or what should be true about this number? Square root. Not a square no, root. Right? Want to break it up into three, equal three equal factors, factors yes. that are exactly the same, right? They should have a third root. Okay. So let's think about all the third powers. What's the what's the the first third power? First cube to the number one. Six one times one times one. Then? Sixteen. No. Sixteen's eight. No. Eight? And then after eight? That's two to the third? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven after that? Wait, my time is up. Sixty-four. And after 64, mm -hmm. 6 times 6 times 6, 216. Uh, so <laughs> if, we, if we go through those numbers, we only went through six of them. And uh, clearly 216 doesn't go into it. And, and we're not going to go probably past 216, because 216 is already like close to half of 416. Okay. 
So we'll just try these, these things that have cubed roots and see if they go into 416. Or you can try, we can back down to 216 and 125. Okay. You think 125 goes in here? No, it doesn't no. end in no. 5 or 0, so it doesn't do that. Um, so what was it before 125? 64? Yeah, Let's see. You, you, tell me, is 64 going to 416? Yes. Sixty-four doesn't go into four sixteen. Well, it does. Six times five times. Okay, that's uh, not sixty-four. How about what's before sixty-four? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven going into fourteen or four sixteen? How about what's the one before? Where we just on twenty-seven. Four twenty-seven. Eight. Eight. Is eight going into two sixteen or four sixteen? Probably. Probably. It does eight times what? Uh, so, what's the cube root of 8? Two. 2. 2 times the cube root of 52. I don't know. This shouldn't, it shouldn't simplify anymore if we, if we were doing our work right because we tried all the biggest cubes possible. But you can try 52. There's not many things that can go into 52 that are cubes. So. Um, it really comes down to just manipulating things with, with rational exponents, um, combining rational exponents, combining expressions with rational exponents, uh, simplifying them. So. questions that if we have vital to this process, it's going to happen all the time.